We are back in the Davis Media Access for another episode of The City Considers. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today we're going to find out a little bit about what a city manager does. My pleasure to have Mike Webb as my guest today. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. And Autumn. Mike was uh, hired by the Davis City Council back in December as our new city manager after Dirk Brazil announced his retirement. And you're the first person hired internally for this position in quite a while. You were doing uh, you were right. on staff for about three years before this, right? Yeah, I was uh, assistant city manager and community development director for about three years prior to my appointment by council. Right. Um, I've been with the city organization for about 20 years. Right, so, I thought it had yeah. been longer. Right. I remember meeting you, paths crossed somewhere, <laughs> right, somewhere sure. down yes, the line. Yes. So what does a city manager do? It sounds, uh, it sounds important. I know it's important. And um, sure. yeah. I know you have a lot of things under your purview. So I'm hoping in our conversation today, we can kind of help the viewing public understand mm -hmm. uh, what's on your plate. Right, no, uh, it's an excellent question. And uh, yeah, the city manager really is uh, one, of, one of two positions in the city organization that are hired directly by the city council. Uh, the city manager is one, the city attorney is the other. Right. Um, and really the city manager's uh, core, um, uh, core mission, if you will, is to, uh, is to implement uh, the city administration um, and really oversees the entire city operation um, in all of our various departments right. and the staff uh, right. associated with that. Uh, in total, we have about 356 uh, or so uh, uh, staff uh, uh, on, on the city uh, with all the departments. And so it's the city manager's role to uh, oversee and, and help prioritize uh, those functions of the city right. on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Yeah. I, as you know, uh, we chatted at the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, State of the City luncheon recently. Mm -hmm. And there you, you kind of gave that, that, that overview of the city and, and you really did a great job lifting up some of the d department heads who were also there that day. Right. And that got me thinking about, as I said, a lot of things on your plate. And there's not just the, the infrastructure and the ongoing issues, issues, but we have new issues like cannabis regulations and, right. and things like that in town. So um, if you can, give us a, a, a brief uh, peek into mm -hmm. what the hot items are right now and how you're gonna work on prioritizing those in the year to come. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, there, there's many, <laughs> um, as, you, as you gleaned from the chamber, uh, right. the chamber luncheon. Um, uh, far too many for me to list here, of course, but some of the highlights. Um, you know, we have uh, city council, and, and the items I think that, that uh, the community sees are largely the items that the city council uh, is dealing with directly sure. at, the, at city yeah. council meetings uh, and that staff comes to them with uh, you know, presentations on. Uh, a lot of it revolves around um, uh, development review. Mm -hmm. uh, we have quite a quite a few development proposals that have been in the pipeline the last year. Uh, quite a few still ahead uh, for, I, for I review. Mean, I was actually yeah. surprised by that. You mm -hmm. shared a map of things that had been, you know, their various stages, right. and there were many more than I realized. Yeah, there's yeah. there's quite a few. Um, I, I'd say in my 20 years with the city organization, I haven't seen this level of of interest in in private development activity. Um, uh, certainly since uh, you know the early to mid 90s mm -hmm. um, and so we've uh, it's it's quite a quite a lot of, of interest in primarily residential development right, right now we're seeing a lot of multifamily housing proposals uh, come forward and that's uh, been uh, a core issue that's been before the city council is consideration of apartment housing some of it more student oriented right. um, and just last week the city council approved the Lincoln 40 apartment proposal for example yeah so development projects is uh, definitely a key area uh, that's uh, that's on, that's on the council's agendas right. lately, and probably will be for the for the coming year um, as they consider other proposals that are that are coming to us and in, and in the pipeline. Uh, other issues, of course, include uh, city infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have quite a few uh, what we refer to as capital improvement projects that right. are that are also underway. Um, uh, largely having to do with road rehabilitation work. Big um, issue. Yeah, definitely yeah. A, a very, um, uh, very hot topic. You know, and, and of interest, I think, yeah. to the community is you know how are we maintaining the infrastructure that we have? Um, there's a, a fair amount happening with regard to parks, mm -hmm. uh, replacement of playgrounds, um, and equipment. Um, really focusing, and I think our council and and staff are in our efforts are really focused on. Uh, maintaining and upkeeping what we have 
um, as opposed to building, building new. new mm -hmm. right? yeah. um, and then I also think uh, other key, key topics include cannabis, mm -hmm. cannabis regulations. Uh, the city council has been um, a very uh, assertive in, in uh, establishing sound local regulations mm -hmm. uh, around the cannabis industry, which is emerging throughout the state. Uh, and we're currently in review of uh, cannabis dispensary proposals. Right. Uh, and then a, another key topic I would say is uh, uh, community policing, uh, police oversight. Um, you know, uh, and we have some efforts underway that will be coming to the council in really the next month. Um, there were recently that. a couple of opportunities for uh, public input into police oversight, and yes. I understand yeah. then the consultant is working with that input and that's will right. generate a report. That's, that's exactly right. Okay. We have a consultant team that's been uh, gathering community and stakeholder uh, feedback on uh, police oversight right. uh, and community policing. Uh, and they're working their way through their recommendations and report that will come to the city council in April, starting in April, right? You want to yeah. touch on the downtown? Because yeah. everywhere I go, city staff are talking to me about right. the, the charrette process that's yes. coming up. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. from, from your, the perspective of your office, where yeah. do you get involved with that? Yeah, so the, uh, it's the, our downtown plan update. Um, mm -hmm. our, our downtown plan hasn't been updated uh, in well over a decade, right. um, almost two, really. Um, and um, you know, we, uh, with direction from the council, of course, we uh, initiated a downtown plan update effort, uh, which we're working with. It's a multidisciplinary team, really, um, and that's how we approach just about everything. That's a that's a key policy undertaking in sure. the city is as a team. Sure. Um, so we have a multidisciplinary team on our staff uh, that involves staff from our city manager's office uh, in terms of community engagement and communications. We have our community development staff, of course, mm -hmm. uh, from a planning and zoning point of view. Um, we have staff from other departments in, included in, in the effort from public works, from finance, uh, and on down the line, so to speak. Um, okay. the, um, uh, the effort it, the combined, the staff effort combined with the consultant team that we've brought on board that's really very expert in, in helping develop downtown plans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is, is part of that. Uh, and community engagement is a huge component, as yeah. you can imagine, of a downtown plan update. Seeking input from the community. Um, we have our uh, advisory committee uh, on the downtown plan update that was appointed by the city council mm -hmm. a few months ago. Right. That's a key component. Um, but seeking community input on what's the community's vision for the downtown in the next 5, 10, 20 plus years. Right. What do we want our downtown to be and how can we facilitate that happening? Right. Um, so there is a, a charrette uh, that is coming up in, in April yeah. um, and we have information uh, on the specifics of the time, date, place uh, on our website, on the main city webpage. There's a a button to click on for downtown plan update that yeah. has all the details. I just shared on our social media about that. It's it's happening in April, and for those who don't know, a charrette is is a fancy word for a, a particular kind of design process that is involving a, a lot of different people and um, a lot of different uh, stakeholders, if you will. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and so there's going to be lots of opportunities to plug in in April. All the events will be held at Davis Community Church, mm -hmm. and um, again, cityofdavis.org, where you can find out more right. information about that. Right. Um, it, boy, if there's one thing people are passionate about in this town or have opinions about, it is our downtown because it's hooking into mm -hmm. those other issues that the council has been dealing with homelessness, mm -hmm. parking, mm -hmm. um, the perennial issue, and then, you know, right. pedestrian access, bike access, livability, density, all of yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Right. All those issues really um, and, and more converge um, geographically in our downtown in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so that's, it's absolutely a critical critical effort of the cities to do that visioning process. Uh, and the charrette is actually a very exciting opportunity for people to engage and come out and spend as much or as little time as they as they can right. uh, engaging in that. And it's done in a concentrated period of, of four days. Yeah. It's like four half day sessions. Um, and you don't have to go to yeah. all of them. You no, just you can right. drop in and, and chat with people and exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so no excuse for us to not participate on. on <laughs> and there's other level. tools. There's other right. tools that we're really want we recognize that people have busy lives and so Throughout our community engagement efforts, we try to provide as many different ways and means and methods of people to engage in our processes as we can, whether it's someone from the comfort of their home online participating or coming out to a charrette or attending the advisory committee meetings 
We're going to pop-up workshops that we're doing a whole different variety of, of ways to engage. Right. Yeah. So what else is on your, your near-term agenda? Well, uh, that, yeah. that isn't enough, right? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, lots going on, and, and uh, um, I, I, I'd say you know I, what I've been working on the last the couple of first couple of months of my tenure as city manager is really establishing um, what I call the cornerstones of of our organization, um, and each city manager has their own approach and sure. their own leadership style and management style. And uh, so I've been uh, spending a fair amount of time working with our staff. Uh, and uh, it's really, I mean, Dirk, you know, uh, I think, did a very, very, very good job. And I had the, the pleasure of working with him the and last he was three, there years. For about three years. About three years. About three years, yeah. And, yeah. and uh, he really set a good tone. He set a very good stage uh, for the organization, turned a lot of things around that mm -hmm. needed to be turned around. And so a lot of my efforts are a continuation of that, um, you know, with my own flavor to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, you know, some of the cornerstones include in setting the organizational culture um, and uh, or continuing that, um, which is one of mutual respect, professionalism, yeah. um, balance in, in people's lives. You know, we could all work 24-7 if, you know, if we, if we, uh, if we tried, but um, we need to keep balance. Well, you um, all have those Tuesday <laughs> nights to contend with. <laughs> I see the staff at the meeting, so yeah. Right, right. And, yeah. and you know, we had one last night that uh, there was a lot, a lot that the council worked through last night. It was very good. Uh, in, a, in a culture of creative thinking uh, and good communication. Um, so those are all, all keys. Um, uh, also, the other cornerstones uh, just briefly include customer service. Uh, that's mm -hmm. something that's very important to me uh, personally and professionally, and I think it needs to be reflected in our organization uh, in how we uh, interact with one another internally in the city, but also how we interact, of course, with uh, the community, our commissions, our council, right. uh, and uh, being mindful of being timely, professional, and respectful. Um, and those are those are core to, to my values and, and uh, what I bring to the organization. Um, briefly, you know, the other cornerstones include, uh, and I mentioned it before, communication. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's one thing we as a city organization do and can always improve upon, it's our communication with the community. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, utilizing a whole variety of means and methods to communicate and um, and, and get feedback from, from our community. Right. Um, and so I'm actually working on some things with our organizational structure that will bolster that and bolster our capabilities there. Um, uh, economic development is another another key area of that's a, almost gets more it gets more into a policy realm of right. council, but economic development is I think a very important cornerstone. We of, need a whole hour for that. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can talk for that and then yeah. some. Um, you know, staff development, uh, developing our staff, our best practices. Um, again, that professionalism aspect of things, always staying you know honed. Uh, sure. And then, lastly, technology, but you know, not not least is technology. Um, there are a whole lot of things that, that we as an organization uh, can and should be doing to bolster our technological capabilities mm -hmm. uh, with an eye toward providing more efficient and more effective services to our community with limited resources. I think the city's actually done a fair amount of that the last couple of years. The website overhaul, the use mm -hmm. of Nextdoor, the, yes. the regular yeah. info going out, I notice, has Absolutely. stepped up a lot, under, especially under uh, Stacey Winton. Yes. So. Yeah, and we have made some really good strides in that, right. and, there, and there's, there's more to do. Right. Yeah. And we're always yeah. here for you, too. Um, <laughs> last question for you. Is there anything that's really surprised you so far? Oh, let's see. Um, <laughs> the, other than the question, <laughs> no, 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 surprising question. Um, no, the uh, surprises, um, not, not unpleasant surprises, I'll tell you that. One of the advantages that I had coming into this role as an internal um, hire, so to speak, yeah. is that in being with the city for the last 20 years is that I come into the role with a very good understanding of, of the community, sure. of uh, stakeholders in the community, of the issues, of the things that are of, of interest to the community. So uh, one of the luxuries that that experience brings is um, minimizes surprises yeah. you know, to me. Yeah. But one of, I guess one of the pleasant surprises, if you will, of coming into this role is um, the uh, vast outpouring of support that I've had mm -hmm. uh, because I can't do it alone. Of course, we, do, we, we function as a team 
having that cohesiveness, that camaraderie as a team is crit critical right. uh, to me being a successful city manager and us being a successful organization. So um, somewhat surprising, although not totally, is just the outpouring of support I've had both internally uh, within the organization, but also from the community. Well, it's good to hear. And you know, prior to Dirk, I think we all know that the, the city manager office went through a lot of upheaval for a long time. There was a lot of change there. Sure. So uh, we hope that your yeah. tenure is a long and successful one. I want to thank you for making time to come into yeah. DMA here and speak with us today. And you have been watching Thanks. The City Considers here with City Manager Mike Webb. You can find this online at our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter, which is at DMA Feed. And uh, the show will air Tuesdays at 6.15 p.m. on DCTV Channel 15 Comcast in Davis. And we'll see you next month. Thanks.